Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is another Board Game Upgrades and Deluxifications video, this time heavily focusing on stickers. And this particular series is brought to you by Top Shelf Gamer. They uh, sell, well, board game upgrades. They don't actually sell stickers, although I'll have to talk to them about that because I think it's a good idea to do so, but they sell inserts and upgrades and deluxe resources and all that, and while none of the games were specifically focusing on some of the things they're doing, we will sort of incidentally be showing you some of those, and I'll call them out when I see it. Uh, in general, for context, when I say sponsored, I mean that they send me various upgrades, and there is a link to buy things from them down below. There's a discount code as well. Generally, hopefully, I'll have one down there below. But yeah, if you want some percentage off your order, check the description, and they give you a variety of upgrades, luxifications, resources, sleeves. They have sleeves. They have inserts. They basically have whatever you need down below. And I do, fair warning, I do get a commission when you buy anything there. But with their referral link, all that stuff. But let's start with parks. I'm going to spread these out a bit so I can give myself some space. We're going to go through as many of these as we possibly can, hopefully all of them, because I have a whole bunch of stickers from three different companies that I'll be going through. I don't remember which ones are from which offhand, but they'll all be linked down below so you can check those out. And we're going to start first off the bat with parks. You see, parks is already a game that this is from, this is from, who's this from again? The name of the company is Keymaster, that's what it was. Keymaster puts out parks, and the whole insert and art and all that stuff is already great. I will note, I have not sleeved my cards. I noticed that when, uh, when doing this, and that's a crying shame because I generally sleeve any game that I'm keeping, and this comes with a whole game chase insert. All that stuff is good. Huge fan of inserts. Uh, I supposedly... I do have Nightfall, I do have a uh, Parks Nightfall over here, supposedly this can be combined, I haven't gone through the steps yet, but at some point I will, I haven't played Nightfall either, which is a crying shame. Let's go ahead and show you what we have here, now for some of these games, basically for context, I stickered a whole lot of games, and one of the downsides of stickers is that it does take time, I'll get more into that doing various sections, all the games timestamped down below, but one thing I didn't think about, is I probably should have done some stickers off, some stickers on, so you can compare and contrast right here. For some games, for like the latter half of what I was stickering, I remember to do that. I was like, oh, I'll partially sticker. For some of the games, I've fully stickered it, which is why for something like this, we have all our little mountain tokens. I'm just going to show you one-handed over here. All our mountain tokens, if you see over there, are stickered. Okay, these are all stickered little thingies. Usually, you just have the plain tokens without anything on them, but these are stickered on nicely. For all the games, I will talk about how hard or not it was to get the stickers on. Some have a better fit than others. It's not necessarily by company, it's more often by game. I will say Parks was amongst the easier ones in terms of stickering. They have just enough padding, because the balance you have here is when you're creating a sticker for a game, if you make it too small, then it's easier to apply, but doesn't fit very nicely. If you make it exactly right, then you have to get it precisely dead accurate to whatever degree, even compensating for manufacturing defects as well, which could be a problem. So it's this weird balance with Parks, uh, they struck it very nicely, so these stickers went on fairly easily. They still take time. I would say the entire Parks, stickering the entire Parks took roughly an hour. I didn't time everything, but most of my stickering I've done to movies, like watching movies with my family or just having a TV show in the background. So most of the things are graded by how long an episode or movie was. But yeah, Parks took roughly an hour for the whole game. I was done with it about a third, about two thirds of the way into Vivo. Uh, Vivo is a movie on Netflix with singing and stuff, and I, I stickered Parks Nightfall while watching that with my kids. So here we go, here's some water droplets. And again, these are all normally just plain tokens. These particular stickers are transparent. So they just overlay nicely. They have that transparent look, the little dark whatever, and they fit there nicely. And then let's go ahead and show you the actual animals while I'll take out the Nightfall expansion to show you that as well. I'm pretty sure the Nightfall expansion had animals in it. Maybe not. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Why do I feel there were stickers here? Oh, they had a few animals. They had a few animals. Not, not a lot. So let's go ahead and show you the, the Nightfall animals first. So you can take a look over there. You can see over here, these have just a little bit more detail. So something like this, this, you know, whatever this is, this rabbit here, for example, this rabbit here. And you can see like, you see that sticker has to fit perfectly so that it hits the ears and everything else. But this adds more texture. It gives you more whatever to the various creatures you have. And then we have a random tree in there because why not? I don't know why Parks Nightfall has a random tree. Like it just included a tree. Did it include anything else? Let's see. Nightfall includes there's no tree. Why is there a tree? It doesn't say that it includes a tree. Why do I feel like I have a tree from Nightfall? I don't know what's going on here. Either way, that is that. But let's show you the regular animal stickers from the base game before we put parks away. And I'm going to show you a general handful first and then highlight one or two. But you see we have these stickers here. If we focus, these are the various stickers that go on. 
And for most of these stickers, by the way, m these are fairly recent to my collection, most of these things. So most of them, I cannot comment on the longevity. And that's a potential problem with everything we talk about today because at the end of the day, ooh, this turtle's a nice one. At the end of the day, if a sticker comes off from a game that you have in your collection, if a sticker comes off, and these are double-sided, by the way, which means double the application time, but it means you don't have to worry about having to show one side or the other. But yeah, if a sticker comes off a game that you've stickered, that is a real frustration. So anything you get here, these are all very nice, by the way. All these stickers, to varying degrees. The Parks one are definitely amongst the better ones. But anything you choose to sticker in your collection, understand that if the sticker comes off, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because they don't send you duplicate stickers for everything. Some of these, if they're doing resources, might have one or two extras, which is, you know, fine. But for anything that requires a unique sticker, like those um, animals... You're kind of out of luck if, if it doesn't work out for you. If it doesn't, if it just comes off, like, what are you going to do? Buy an entirely new sticker pack for the one missing animal? It's just going to be a frustrating experience. From there, let's go to Paleo, which Paleo is actually the, the I want to say, looking at all these, Paleo are my least favorite stickers. Not not favorite, but, like, not not good, but my least favorite stickers from the various, uh, well, stickers that I've done over here. And that's partially because I don't think Paleo gives you a lot of room for creativity in the sticker department, and in fact, I'm actually looking into getting an entirely different option for Paleo for the resources here, but I will show you the stickers because I think they're better than the plain, what's it called, the plain tokens, but it's only a marginal step better, and I don't know if these ones are as worth it compared to others, although personal choice and all that. So, these were pretty easy, these are easily the fastest, no, no, the fastest was a different game. This is one of the fastest to sticker, taking me roughly 20 minutes to sticker everything, and also, this is a fun fact over here, we have one token missing stickers, because, and this is just, this is typical board gamer problems, very much first world problems, the game included an extra piece, meaning the Paleo has listed, I don't know the number, but it's like 25 meat tokens, and they gave me 26. The stickers gave me 25 meat stickers. So now I'm left with an extra token that I should not need by all accounts. I could throw it out. I'm not going to throw it out because I'm a crazy person and I can't do rational things, but I should throw it out. I kind of want to just throw it out off. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. They're gone. Okay. That's thrown halfway across the room. I may never see it again. That, that's an extra token. It's not even necessary. It's, it's useless. It's dead. I still feel bad inside. Either way, let's go ahead and show you these resources here. These are very much gamer problems. The idea of having an extra token and wanting to keep it but not having the extra matching sticker. But you don't need an extra token, but it's extra. But yeah, these give you the, the various sides over there. That one's falling off. Keep in mind the wood, unfortunately. See, here's what happens. You have these, these tokens here and these tokens here, which clearly have a top and bottom. The wood, by the nature of it being a square, when you look at it like that way, means that it does have a few different option sides. It can be just as easily be that side as opposed to that side. But they only gave you enough stickers to stick two sides, which means you're left with one token that doesn't have a clear, sorry, a clear and obvious top and bottom. Rather, that one token has a top, bottom, side, left, whatever, and they're all the same. So that's an interesting problem. Not the only game that's had the problem that in general, like anything that has a cube or a square shape will have that issue. I think Paleo is the only one from the games I've stickered that has that issue. Or at least partially because some of these stickers I didn't even end up using because I already have halfway upgraded games for some of these. So like when I get to Concordia, I've already upgraded resources, so I didn't use their sticker resources. I used my own, I used my deluxe resources from Top Shelf Gamer and then used, um, use the stickers for the other things that weren't upgraded. Let's go from there into Tiny Towns. I'm just going to make my way left to right over here. We'll do Tiny Towns, then we'll do Obsession, and then I'll just work my way down the pod pile with Concordia being last on the list. So, Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns has been featured on this video in the past, on this series in the past. I think it's actually been featured twice now, as I've slowly upgraded different parts of it. This will be its third time on the showing. We have all these deluxe resources to replace the various, you know, plain resources they have, so those do a solid job. We have the metal tokens, some of my favorite metal tokens, by the way. I've actually replaced recently. I'm going to show you these all from Top Shelf Gamer, as is the insert. The insert over here is from Top Shelf Gamer, but this over here, these tokens, these metal tokens, amongst some of my favorite, I've used these to replace the ore in Castle of Burgundy, so that I have nice heavy chunks of ore. I bought like two or three separate packs of them for that. Then, let's get into the sticker part of things. Again, this is another fully stickered one that I did not have the presence of mind to think about the fact that it's, you know, 
should be doing half and half. And I would say as far as sticker application, Paleo went on very nicely, very easy there. Uh, these ones were a mixed bag. So first of all, we do have various resource cubes over here that do not come with stickers, but that's okay because like I said already, I've already upgraded the resources anyway. So we don't have this square side problem. They just didn't upgrade them at all. No stickers for that. In some cases, I didn't use all the stickers because they weren't necessarily necessary. Over here, we have the wells, okay? I'm just gonna go through the buildings one at a time, I guess. The wells from the game, have this little sticker on them, so you can have these little, just more of a well effect as you put those down. And that's the least impressive of these. Uh, this game, Tiny Towns, is the one that I would have the hardest time telling you how long I stickered it, because I did it over multiple random sessions of just having it on my table, sitting down, stickering a few, coming back. This is over like three days, but like it might have been 30 minutes, it might have been an hour, I don't know, somewhere in that range. Either way, let's go ahead and show you some of the buildings here, because the buildings are delightful. So we have these buildings here. These over here are the new buildings. In fact, let me just go ahead and get you a handful of different types of buildings. Because normal tiny towns will have um, will have plain cardboard buildings. These will be upgrading the various types of buildings. And again, double-sided. Uh, this far as sticker application, I would say these were fairly easy. Uh, for the most part, especially considering the amount of little nooks and cre crevices. The trees were not fun, and the animals were not fun. So I'll get to that in a second. In fact, I'll do the animals separately in a minute. Uh, do you want to do an acorn? I'll do an acorn here. Sorry, my voice is slowly losing here. Uh, we got that tree, we got that tree. I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of these in the top cam, and I'll grab a little well for good measure. So, okay. These are the stickered versions of the the meeples, whatever. The, the, the to I don't even know what you call them. Beeples, are they beeples? Building meeples? Or do you call them uh, meepings, like my buildings? Mildings, mildings. That's what we should call these, mildings. That will catch on, because meeple, for context, is short for my people. That's the origin of the name. Therefore, a building-shaped piece of wood should be called a milding, right? It should be called a milding, my building. It's not going to take off at all. <laughs> but yeah, going back to these over here, you can see over here, these are these are very attractive. And actually, I'm going to link to another set as well, because these were two sets. I chose the one I preferred. There were two different sets, because I mentioned that there were three different companies who have different stickers here. And from those three companies, um, two of the companies had Tiny Town stickers. I went with the one that I liked better, which is this one, but it was back and forth. In fact, the truth is I'm actually lying. I didn't go with the one that I liked better. I let my daughter choose. I like them both nearly equally, and I let Ricky ultimately choose which one she preferred, because I was like, I'm having a hard time choosing. There were, the problem is I liked some buildings from one and some buildings from the other. So she chose this one. I was fine with it. Let's go ahead and show you the animals. Now, the animals were not great as far as direct contact adhesion, meaning perfectly lining up with everything. They were fine. You'll see. I'm going to show them in a second, so you'll see the potential for, like, it won't stick out to you exactly how good or not good it is. Let's grab another animal here. We, got, we don't have a squirrel. So let's go ahead and show you these, and then I'll try to show you some of the adhesion issues just because they didn't line up perfectly. So they're good. I'm not loving the animals. I like the sticker, but I just don't love the sticker overlap. So here we go. Here's showing you the various animal types. Now, I don't know how well you can see it from there. Let's try to show you this one specifically. This is, a, this is a, probably one of the worst ones. So if you look there, I'll show you over here, you can see the sticker overlap there. And the problem is, you might say, hey, Alex, you just put the sticker on wrong. But the stick if the sticker overlaps at the bottom, let's show it like this. If the sticker overlaps at the bottom and I just put it wrong, then it shouldn't overlap at the top, right? But it does. It overlaps there too, which means the sticker is not a perfect fit. The fact that it overlaps at the bottom and the top doesn't mean that I put it incorrectly or I wouldn't call it out. I'd be like, hey, I put the sticker on incorrectly. Just be careful as you put stickers on. But rather, they weren't perfect fits on the animals. They're fairly good. For the most part, I have no problems with it. But it's a slight frustration because it's a weird position where it's like, I didn't upgrade. It's a step sideways. The meeples look nicer, but there's a drop of sticker overlap. If I really wanted to, if I had the time, attention, or detail, I could go ahead and... Um, cut them off. I could trim the, the stickers, but that moves into way too much work to individually, like with an exacto knife, trim off the stickers. Honestly, once it's applied, now that I'm thinking about it, once the sticker is applied to the meeple, then in theory, the exacto knife process shouldn't, I might exacto knife these now that I'm thinking about it. See, I was thinking about it all wrong. I was thinking that I'd have to exacto knife the sticker first, but it's actually a stupid way to do it. Really, you want to exacto knife the sticker after it's applied, which just means tracing the meeple with an, I'm, I, I think I'm gonna be doing that. Okay, cool. Problem partially, potentially solved. We shall see. That is Tiny Towns, which brings us to Obsession. 
There's too many games. It's going to take me so long to go through these. I didn't realize how many games I was talking about today. But I went with all the games. These are all the games in my collection that are stickered. The only one that's not is Dune because Dune, well, Dune's a bit of an edge case. I have some stickers for Dune, haven't really applied them all, and not sure I'm sticking with them, partially because of the overlap issue, although the X-Acto knife might change that. Basically, Dune had some really nice stickers, but also some that overlapped. So let's go ahead and show you. In fact, I'm not going to show you these individual boxes because you'll get all you need to know from the bag of meeples that I pre-sorted for you. See, here we go. Here is a bag of meeples over here. And we have the same problem, by the way. We have, and this one I'm not going to get rid of because I'm not that crazy, but we have an extra where the game gave me an extra little blue guy. So I don't have a sticker for him, but because there's only five and this is the sixth one as opposed to like the 26th one, I'm going to hold on to this because I'm, I'm still a little crazy. Hold up. And, and also to be fair, when I chuck that resource across the room, half of you were like, yeah, that's right. You don't need it. You should. That's not true. 10% of you did that. The other 90% of you thought I was a monster. So we're all irrational here. Either way, these are, and again, I should have, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's use this for a learning exercise. This is a difference. This is what a standard meeple looks like in Obsession. That's your little meeple, okay? Looks like a little cute little guy. This is an upgraded meeple, a sticker meeple. Look at that. Now I can show you what they look like. And this is the two side by side, so you can see which one you think you prefer for your game. And when I say prefer, I mean you have to not only prefer the sticker, but you also have to be willing to pay for the stickers. Mostly they're pretty affordable. Uh, they range in price, but somewhere between 5 to $15 per set. And then you also, more importantly, have to be willing to take the time to apply them. Now, I will say, this is everything for Obsession, both the base game and the upstairs downstairs expansion. Let's go ahead and show you a handful of meeples. But this took me for all of that. They were pretty easy to apply despite having some tricky ones. Like, is there a tricky one I can show you? Mm, no, I want to show you one second. One second. I do want to show you a box here. No, actually, no. It's over here. Perfect. Okay, great. So this is a particularly tricky one to apply because of the briefcase being a separate piece. But even that was fairly easy with very minimal to no issues. And I would say the entire thing took me, I'm guesstimating here, maybe a half an hour to deal with all the meeples in Obsession. And let's go ahead and show you a handful of meeples. And by the way, if you want nice uh, pictures of these, as opposed to me just showing you on camera, all the links down below, various Etsy sites, will have nice little pictures. So these are some of the meeples. You can see them over here just slowly. This is what a handful of meeples looks like when they're all stickered. Okay, look, look at all the texture. Let's try to show you a little bit of a one of each so we can go through that. Just clear that, and let's do that, and that, and that. This is, this is me just saying, and that, until I'm done. We need a pink one, we need a red one. Anything I'm missing here? We got the brown one, we got the blue one. I think, oh, we need a blue one, another blue one. Okay, and then we've lost one. And I think those are all the meeples we have. There's actually some more from the base game. This is a mix of the expansion and whatnot. There's the green one from the base game. There are some others, but this is giving you, you a good reference of what stickered meeples from Obsession will look like, or do look like. Hey, look at that. I forgot the green one. Here's the green one. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that is Obsession. They, again, went on fairly well. Overall, very happy with these. If I was, I should rate these stickers. I'm not going to rate these stickers. I like the park ones a lot. Paleo ones were a little bit less ideal. Obsession was very good. Tiny Towns is very good with the caveat that the animals had some overlap that will have to be dealt with separately. Um, anything else? Uh, paleo, parks, Tiny Towns, Obsession. And Obsession, I like them a lot. That is these. Now, this fits in with that little bit of haranguing there because I haven't properly incorporated the upstairs downstairs expansion in terms of how I'm storing everything. It's actually a separate box, but I just lumped it together for the sake of this video. So that is Obsession. Let's look into the next one, which will be Viticulture. Now Viticulture is also going to have some prior upgrades I've done in the past, including metal coins. Some of my favorite metal coins are from Viticulture. And in fact, I'll link down below to uh, the Quacklope. They just did an upgrade video covering, well, Obsession, not Obsession, covering Viticulture. And in their upgrade video, uh, they, what's the recall? They, they, they upgraded a whole lot of stuff that I might have to track down, we'll see. Because they had a nice insert, a sideways storing insert. They had some things I liked, but I have stickers, which I liked a lot. But here are the coins. We've done coins in the past. Not gonna, I mean, there's three different resource types. I'm not gonna show you everything because this video is gonna be long enough without those, but that's that. And what I specifically want to show you is I did make sure to not sticker everything this time around so that I can show you the difference between stickered, pre-stickered, and post-stickered meeples. If only I could open this bag. I need a new bag here because the edge there is ripping off. Cool. 
This is what a handful of non-stickered stuff looks like in Viticulture. Now, if you've watched some of the older videos, you know that I also have 3D upgraded bits. So I'm still choosing what I want to do with my uh, set over here, whether I'm keeping the 3D upgraded bits or the stickered meeples. I'm definitely not keeping the plain meeples. That is an easy conversation. The problem is, while I really like the 3D upgraded bits for Viticulture, the, there are enough still plain wooden pieces left over that it ends up being this weird hybrid. And I don't love the hybrid as much. I like the consistency of having, well, this. And again, I'll show you these individually, but this is what a handful of stickered things look like. Okay, now let's go ahead and show you some head-to-head -head comparisons. These will be some stars. Let's go ahead and show you this. These are stars, stickered and not stickered. Just a little bit of extra color. And they go on very nicely, by the way. I should say all of the, mm, that's not true. 97% of the stickers for Viticulture go on very smoothly and cleanly. Some of the meeples don't perfectly line up with the shape. It's possible I'm doing them wrong, I don't know, but it didn't seem like I was doing them wrong. Then we have the cork. Now this says on the sticker that it needs an extra adhesive for this to stay. Basically we have your standard little player marker here, and then we have the corked player marker, which gives you a little sticker that keeps the color on the top, but it makes it feel like it's a cork, so it's got some character to it. It says it needs an adhesive. It so far has stayed on just fine, so we'll see how that goes. We have the various water tower. Let's find the matching water tower. Now, by the way, offhand, I will say, something I already like is I have to look for the water tower over here. I can just grab the water tower over here. It makes it stand out significantly more. So there is that plus. Again, you still see your color very solidly, so there's not gonna be any confusion there, but we have the water tower. Then we have the, I should not be doing all these buildings, but I'm kind of stuck here. Let's do the grande. Grande. Again, this is just the grande worker, and they do have options for male and female grandes, so you can choose which one you prefer over there. And then for the non-grandes, we just have a variety. So let's go ahead and just show you a variety of non-grande workers, including the specialty workers. Now that's actually one downside here. Normal viticulture has, let's just show you these. Normal viticulture will have these meeples like so, so that you have your regular meeples, and then you have your specialists that stand out very obviously because of the white stripes on them. The downside of this one is this one, the specialists don't stand out quite as much. Let's show you here, okay? Over here, we have two regular meeples and two specialists. It's a lot harder. These, by the way, the ones on the left are the regulars and the ones on the right are the specialists. That is one potential downside. I don't have an easy solution there. I may try to mark them somehow, maybe like color the top with a Sharpie, I don't know. I'll figure out an option if it becomes a problem. Let's go through a few more different things they have. Just, these are all, I like these all. These are very nice stickers. Again, sticker adhesion for all these games I can't overly comment on. Uh, also, I can't tell you how long it took to sticker Viticulture because I haven't stickered the whole Viticulture. I specifically have not in order to show you this. I will say stickering an individual faction, an individual player color, took, took probably around six minutes. And so I would extrapolate outwards that the entire thing will take somewhere around an hour. Then we have these over here. You can see I like the rooster personally. The rooster is one of my favorite. Let's show you that rooster there. That's the rooster. Very colorful, very nice. We got the grape stand over there, a whole bunch of different options. These are all the stickered meeples in Viticulture. So again, overall, pretty solid. I'm happy with this addition. I like them a lot. They sticker both the meeples, because I know one problem Quacklop had, because I watched their video, was that they had great meeples for the minute for the people, but not anything for the buildings. Which is ironic, by the way, now that I think about it, I should offer them my uh, deluxe buildings. That's what I should do. Maybe I'll offer crack with my deluxe buildings because my the problem I had is my meeples were plain, but my buildings were upgraded. So we'll see what happens there. Anyways, that is Viticulture. I will have to further upgrade this game at some point with more stuff because it is an amazing game. I still haven't reviewed it on the channel. I keep meaning to, keep pushing it off, but that is Viticulture from Stonemaier Games. Lost Ruins of Arnak will be a quick one because, first of all, one thing I found interesting here is they provided stickers for things like the compasses, but they for um for things that provide that they provided stickers for things that the base game already provided stickers for which is unnecessary now i will have to upgrade this soon because i guarantee you i'm getting uh i'm getting the expansion hidden leaders and because i'm getting the expansion i don't know what actually comes in the expansion in terms of components but if there's anything that needs stickers i'll have to get a new sticker pack to, to keep up the pace now i do have upgraded compasses i've talked about in the past upgraded compasses these are also available from top shelf gamer let me show you a few of these these just give you a better option because this game it has a bit of a mix of playing resources and amazingly upgraded resources to begin with. So I upgraded these compasses because they look much nicer than the standard tokens you have in the game. I haven't upgraded the money yet, which I should do. I should upgrade the money as soon as I can. I want to. But So let's go ahead and show you these miniatures. 
And this is one where they again give you a variety of options. So they actually give you three different miniatures. So for three factions, I was able to choose different combinations. And then I just chose the last one. So here's what you have, just upgraded explorers. These are nice. I like them. I don't need them quite as much. It's not like a whole thing, but I definitely do like the extra character and individuality they add to each team. Solid addition. And because there's like eight of them, this took me like four minutes to sticker. Not a long time here at all. Which is going to be true for the next one as well. The next one as well is also a like four minute sticker process because of the fact that it's not a lot going on, which is Quest for Eldorado. An amazing game. Amazing game for Anakin and Sierra. I really enjoy this one. And this has no insert or anything going on here. It's got sleeved cards. That's what we've got. And then we have these tokens over here, which are, again, stickered explorers for your options over here. And they actually give you enough stickers in case you have, because I have both games, both base sets. There's Quest for Eldorado, and then there's uh, the Temples of Eldorado, something like that. But either way, whatever one that is, they give you enough stickers so you can actually sticker both, which is very nice. Probably because there's not a lot of stickers, and that would actually fit on one sheet. So I'll include some backs and fronts over here so you can see them. They have male and female, so like what I did is I just did one male and female for each team uh, in terms of one yellow, one blue, one, one, one yellow is male, one yellow is female. But you could actually mix it up if you want, but the, I... They give you two of each. So you could do two males, two females. You could do one of each. I just did one of each for both and then did the same for the, the Temple Spell Dorado. But you have a total of eight to figure out how you want to distribute it. Which brings us to five tribes. Should we do five tribes or Concordia? Five tribes. Five tribes first. Now, five tribes is one that these are not done stickering. You can see they're over here because I stopped in middle to be able to show you that compare and contrast option. And I'll finish that later. But five tribes, first of all, this is also upgraded to Top Shelf Gamer. We got coins. We have the insert. What else do we have? I think coins and insert is what we have. That's all from Top Shelf Gamer. You can check that out. And then we have these tokens here. So let's go ahead and grab some of these and some of these, and some of these, and that should be enough over there to show you what we got. Oh, I'll need these two. So this is the game that I was in the middle of stickering when I was like, oh, maybe I should do some before, some after. So here's what we'll need to do. Let's start by showing you some trees, okay? This is what a tree looks like without the sticker, okay? This is what the tree looks like with the sticker, okay? That looks significantly nicer on the board for context. Uh, most of the five tribe stickers do go on well but you do need to spend time being precise with them. Okay, most of them. Some are easier than others, but I would say I don't have any problems with overlap, but you have to be very precise. Now the palaces I can't show you before and after because I finished the palaces before I decided, hey, let me let me figure out whether I can show you the other options. Now something to be mindful of is it might look like these are perfectly symmetrical. Many of the stickers here are not. You need to be careful which side you're applying it on in order to be accurate. Then we have just a general handful of meeples. And this is where the problem comes in, by the way. They don't have, at least as of right now, I'm going to have to mesh them and see, but they don't have any stickers for the Artisans and the Gala, which means if you have the Artisans and the Gala, you're going to have a slightly mismatched set of stuff, which is not the end of the world, but, I mean, first world problems and all that. Definitely, definitely a little bit irritating. So let's show you a handful of stickered meeples and a handful of non-stickered meeples, okay? Here's a handful of non-stickered meeples. And here's a handful of stickered meeples, okay? So you can see, I mean, they're, they're lying in different angles, but let's go ahead and try to move those over and move it to the side, and ah, we're losing one. That's a handful of stickered meeples over here, just giving you different stickered options for your people, all different colors, so they can stand on different ways, or you can choose these. Depends on what you prefer. I can argue it either way. I, I want the sticker. For sure for the palm trees, that's not even a question to me. These, I can hear the argument for a simplicity of just a pure single color, I, I like these. These are much nicer as far as dumping them on the board and feeling a drop more thematic in a game that definitely is not thematic. So I'm going to have to finish stickering these like 100 meeples later. This will probably be the game that takes the longest. I imagine I'm looking at a total of around two hours to sticker everything in this game. We'll see. Although Concordia is not short either. Concordia is not short either. I'll explain why as soon as we go through it. But let's go ahead and dump these back in this little container over here. And then let's show you the options over here because... Additionally, we have camels. We have sticker camels and non-sticker camels. So let me show you what a non-sticker camel looks like. That's a non-sticker camel. And then we have a sticker camel, okay? Now these are interesting because they do fit on perfectly, but they don't they don't perfectly line up with the hump. The head is over drop more to the right, and you can't get it more perfectly aligned without the tail sliding off. But this is a stickered and a non-stickered camel, and again, they're double-sided as well, so you can see that over there. But again, Overall, I like the camels quite a bit. The only one I'm a little on the fence on is the meeple. There is something that is slightly compelling about the pure solid color meeples. Not enough for me to stick with that. I'd rather have the stickers, but an argument could be made. 
Let's go ahead and dump that in, dump these in. These are the trees I haven't finished because I realized halfway through I want to show you that. And let's put everything away over here and then deal with the rest of the stickering later. This is going to be doing movie time, to be very clear. In fact, because, because of the fact that I'm actually filming this on Thanksgiving, for whatever it's worth, which means I might do a movie day with the kids at some point, because we're a little behind in the movies they want to watch. So maybe I'll be stickering some more things doing the movie. Although, honestly, it's a little hard, because we turn the lights off so we can have a good, immersive experience with everyone. But that does mean that I'm trying to sticker in the dark, which is a drop harder. I won't hold it against anyone. And finally, we have Concordia. Concordia, which is chock full of deluxified resources and everything. I've covered this one multiple times in the past. That's not true. Was it multiple or is it once? I don't remember. Either way, we'll go ahead and take this board out over here. This is just one box of Concordia. The way I store Concordia is in two boxes. I have all the maps in a single box and then everything else over here. We have deluxified resources over here. Let's take one of these out here. Okay, we have deluxified resources in terms of these trays. These are all from Top Shelf Gamer. I've gone over these in another video. I'm not going to heavily go into them now, but they upgrade your other resources, which granted I have not thrown out, but probably should. I just, I, I don't like throwing things out, okay? Not until I'm certain. And then we have the coins, which let's try if I dump a few out. These I've also gone over in the past, and these are awesome coins. Some of the heavier coins I've had, along with the uh, Viticulture ones. These are solid, solid coins. Very nice. Either way. And then we have, these are the player areas. And then you have sleeved cards as well. I recommend Sleeve Kings as my general location of choice. I don't know if Top Shelf Gamer sells Sleeve Kings or not, but either way, those are my my preferred sleeves have been Sleeve Kings. It's a good it's a good compromise of quality and price. Then we have some of these, which I have made sure to give you a before and after on these as well. So about halfway down the stick ring, they do have stickers for resources. Like I said, I haven't used those because I already upgraded my resources in a different way. So if you get those, then great, but I did not. I mean, I have them, I just because you can, can't really split them up. But over here, let me see if I can pour out a set of things over here. Okay, I'm trying to keep it all in. Yeah, this, this is a better way to do it. This is definitely a better way to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and show you now. Sorry for the mess on the table. I'm trying to dump out one compartment without the others and doing that one-handed, which is a little harder than you might think. So here's a general hand full of non-stickered components. And here is a general hand of stickered components. Again, may not do the justice I want, so let's show it component by component. So starting off the bat, we have your ships. Okay, so here are some ships before and after stickers. Okay, here's before stickers. And then here's after stickers. Okay, so again, you still have the solid color. You have no problem distinguishing who's who on the map, but these are before and after stickers. That's the ship option. Then we have the various mi miniatures or people. And there I'll actually have to show you a different option as well because there are two different types of, or three different types of people here. So let me make sure I got them all. And then you can choose how you want to apply your stickers. I'm gonna show you from these three over here. Let me just get this all lined up. Bear with me. And here we have your non-stickered meeples as they wander around the map. And here you have your stickered meeples as they wander around the map. Okay, so we have a uh, centurion, male and female senators, or whatever they are, messengers, I don't know. But those are your options as far as the stickered miniatures. And then lastly, lastly we have the houses. And this is where Concordia, while being fairly easy to apply, does take time. You see, here's an example of a non-stickered house. Okay, this is a non-stickered house over here. They're plain, simple, does the job. And here is a stickered house. We got the top sticker on both sides and then the front and back. Okay, so that's four stickers for every single one of these houses that needs to be applied. Looks much nicer on the map, in my opinion. The side makes sure you have no problem telling anything whatsoever, but it does require a bit of work to get there. And that's basically everything. These are the stickers I have so far. There are a bunch of other options, not as many as I would ideally like to see considering the amount of board games we have in the general board game space, but a fairly decent amount considering I don't know how known these are. And in fact, I have to thank one of you. The only reason I know these exist is because when I did a video on Tiny Towns, someone else, that's not Tiny Towns, Tiny Towns is down there. When I did a video on Tiny Towns, someone said, oh, hey, have you gotten stickers for your Tiny Towns? And I was like, stickers? What are those? And so I looked into sticker options and well, now I've done stickers for Tiny Towns. So there are different options out there. There are some other games, some games I don't have, other games I have but haven't gotten because I want to start with a starting batch before I commit heavily to the sticker genre. I don't know what it's called. But overall, as far as what I have so far, I was very impressed with Concordia, Obsession, Viticulture, um, Five Tribes, Tiny Towns, and Parks. Uh, Quest for Eldorado and Lost Ones of Arnak do the job. 
but also there's such a small scale in terms of what you're actually adding to the game that I'm not overly impressed by them. They're just small for the nice to have category. Paleo was nice and fine. Again, nice to have, but certainly didn't uh, drastically improve the table immersion and I'm looking for another upgrade there. But overall I would say, and then Dune, Dune was a tricky one because I liked some of the stickers in Dune, but not all of them fit perfectly. So I kind of took a break while I figure out what's going on there. So that's not present in this video. Perhaps I'll show some in a future video. And that's everything. This is your board game upgrades video, sticker edition or something like that. I'll figure out the title later. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. Depending on when you're watching this, have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time with family, friends, yourself, whoever. And as always, have a good one.